I I have some tips. Uh, a lot of people have tips for how to uh, I guess ha- how to avoid becoming a victim of this kind of uh, violence that we're seeing throughout this country. And I have a couple of tips. Um, they're they're a little different. Uh, because there are different ways that you can become a victim of this kind of violence. One way would be to be an actual victim of the actual violence. That's what happened uh, to those those sweet kids uh, and those sweet adults. And honest to God, of could I sit here for 10 minutes and monologue about how emotionally devastating what happened is? Yes. At this point, is there a purpose to doing that? No. Do you need another person to tell you uh, that it's a big deal and that lives have been destroyed and that it's despicable? No. You don't need that. So here's a couple of things. One thing, let's um, not fall into a trap of using an event like this to create false demonizations. I'm thinking particularly about people who have autism or Asperger's disease. And it was quite amazing to me. Um, I think some of it has simmered down a little bit, but in the early stages of the coverage uh, of this event that uh, it, it was the the media made quite a big to do about the fact that this kid was and here's the thing I'm still not clear whether he's been officially diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome or autism or something on the uh, autism continuum or whether this is a conclusion that people reached because some people described him as being uh, socially awkward and a loner and If you go look at the uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, you will see that that is one of the things that you would look for in making a diagnosis. But it it sure as hell doesn't mean somebody has Asperger's because they're socially awkward. Lots of people are just socially awkward because sometimes uh, being in society is very difficult. And later in the show, by the way, put a pin in that because I'll I'll explain to you why if you now go and look up, try to look up the symptoms of Asperger's syndrome in the DSM, you will have a lot of trouble finding it. And I'll explain what happened there. But let us not, please, demonize uh, people with autism or Asperger's syndrome. You know, it is true that people with various degrees of autism um, ha- have a higher incident of what I would call acting out, yelling, um, shoving people, not all of them. But if you're just looking at a population, statistically, more of that occurs with people with these conditions than in the general population. But that is a far cry from methodically. In fact, in a way, it really pisses me off, excuse my language, because what you see with autistic people, Children especially are very quick, impulsive outbursts, and they are not focused on really causing a lot of damage. And here we have a guy who very methodically and very carefully over a considerable period of time had and implemented a plan to cause a significant amount of death and destruction. So really... That connection is not only unfair, it's clinically wrong. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's, it's the opposite. In addition to that, like people, uh, people with autism that, that have episodes like what you're talking about, where they have a quick reactive uh, reaction to something, it, it generally doesn't last very long. That focus of maintaining no, no, that anger and that and whatever it is that they're they're lashing out at it doesn't last. It's not hateful. What happens is uh, people with autism and especially Asperger's, a higher functioning people say it's a higher functioning uh, form or or variant of autism. They become very comfortable with routines, and if the routines are disrupted, then you see an acting out, and that's a completely different thing than a guy saying, "I'm going to kill my mother, and then I'm going to gather the weapons, and I'm going to drive to the school, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to shoot that person, and then that person, and then that person." It's completely so. That's the other thing, and then the more general thing about, "Oh, crazy, crazy, he's crazy." I don't know if he's crazy. I have no idea if he's crazy. He's wicked. 
He's 100% wicked, and he did a wicked thing. Whether he also, at the same time, uh, can be could have been diagnosed with a specified mental disorder, maybe so, maybe not. But is that why he did it? Um, and then, of course, you know, the other tip is you cannot let him kill more, meaning kill your spirit, kill your ability to go on with life, kill your ability to see the good in people. Because ultimately, this thing that happened and these things that keep happening, because they do keep happening, these are not the thing. A lot of people now feel like, this is the thing. This is what we are. This is what the world is. This is what life is. No, that is not the thing. That's the aberration that reminds you of the thing. The thing, the thing is all those parents who loved those kids. The thing is those teachers, uh, so many of whom were so brave and so clever uh, in the heat of the moment. The thing is uh, the capacity of human beings to experience and express extreme amounts of compassion and empathy that can span across thousands of miles. People who cannot directly relate, people who don't have children, people who never wanted to have children, being completely overcome with grief at what happened. That's the thing. That's what we are. That's what life is. That's what the world is. And you don't let these wicked people take that from you. If only, look, if only because don't let them win. Don't let him don't let him win anymore. Then he already won. And unfortunately he won in a weird, twisted, disgusting, wicked way. He 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 won a little game that he was playing with the world. But let's limit that.